Welcome to WTAJ's award-winning sports feed. Tonight's show is brought to you by Five Star Mitsubishi. Here are your hosts, Jordan Tracy and Andrew Lee Penwell. Hello, hello, hello. It is 1110. That means it's time for Sports Beat, and it is playoff time. Turn up your volume, throw the remote out the window, because you're not going anywhere. I'm Jordan Tracy. Alongside me is Andrew Lee Penwell. Let's begin this playoff edition in Altoona, where Woo! they host Mifflin County for the District 6 semifinals in 6A, where they played in Week 3. It was Mountain Lions who came out on top 38 0. Let's go to Mansion Park. First quarter, the Huskies get on the board first. Landon Eichhorn rolls left, directs traffic, finds a wide open Isaac Wilson, and they're up 7 0. Later in the quarter, Tyson Reed on the toss for Altoona off the edge and powers into the end zone all tied at 7. And he's loving it. Second quarter, Huskies lead 14 7. The pitch to Julian Hazelwood, who finds the edge, and I no love one will the touch him. Shoes and gloves. That's an awesome look. That was a freshman for the playoff touchdown, all tied at 14. Okay, follow along here. Sean Bentley filling in on the kickoff, told him made a make a play, and he does this. No Husky goes for the football, so Bentley recovers it inside the 10. Got to be the longest onside kick ever. Alex Yost punches it in to take the 21 to 14 lead before half. And Altoona wins it 31 to 24. They face the undefeated State College for the District 6 title next week. Let's go to District 6 Double A for Mountain Union versus Penns Valley. First quarter game tied at 7. Penns Valley, Ty Watson punching this one in from close as the Rams go up 14 to 7. More from the Rams, Jackson Bromig lost this one to Dan and Kurtz Setter. Run, 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 he goes after the catch. Run, 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 he goes. Run, run, run into the end zone at 21 to 7, Penns Valley. Final minutes of the second quarter, Rams up 28 to 7. More from Watson. Dodge and defenders. Dodge, left and dip, right. He dive goes. and dodge. Yes, there we go. Jordan Rams win this one 55 to 7. Let's go to Richland now, where the Rams hope to keep their season undefeated. They'll carry that into the playoffs against West Smokin. All right, let's do it late in the second. Rams up 28 to nothing. Easton Robertson on the handoff finds pay dirt, and the Rams go up by 35. Wow. I think the undefeated thing's going to continue. Later in the yeah, quarter, Sam Penna right. finds Austin Yarnick over the middle. And as the Richland announcer always says, Stampede Cullen. And it did. Rams move on. Final score 48 to 6. Bald Eagle hosting Bellwood in this one. Opening drive, Eagles Carson Nagel goes up top to Cameron Watkins for 28 yards and the score. Bald Eagle up 7 0. Nagel throwing it around the yard tonight. This time, Hale Burns, 45 yards for the score. Into the end zone he goes. Eagles up 14 7. Still in the first quarter, Blue Devils getting on the board. Gavin Ridgeway to Griffin Kyle for 53 yards. Bald Eagle up 14 to 7, and they win this one 45 to 19. And folks, the playoffs continue tomorrow night when Bishop Guilfoyle hosts Southern Huntington. Kickoff is at 7 at Mansion Park in Altoona. Jordan, we have to take a quick break, potty break, go fix our hair, got to go pay the bills as well. That's, That's right. Fun. Coming up next, I wasn't expecting the potty break. It's a playoff edition of our game of the week. Central and Tyrone go at it for a chance to win a date with Penn Cambria for the District 6 title. Don't go anywhere. The Game of the Week is next. Back from the potty. <laughs> Time for our Game of the Week. Sponsored by Five Star Mitsubishi in Altoona. This week, we have to give it to the Central Dragons. They're on the road facing Tyrone. District 6 AAA semifinals. The last time these teams faced each other was back in 2020, where Central got the 17-14 win. Awaiting for the winner of this one is the Penn Cambria Panthers. And some of the Penn Cambria players were in attendance scouting their next potential opponent. Mm. First game, drive of the game for Tyrone. And Ashton, walk this way! Finds Ross Gamp over the middle to pick up the fourth and 18. But they weren't able to capitalize. After the big stop, Jeff Hohenstein marches the Scarlet Dragons down the field and takes himself for the first points of the game. Later in the first for the Dragons, get the ball back, and Hohenstein finds Elijah Lingenfelter for the touchdown, and the pylon put them up by 14. Things kept on turning up for Central as running back Cade <laughs> Rule drives through to find Pater, puts his team up 21. But the Golden Eagles trying to fight back and they would as walk, walk this way, finds Gamp that way. He goes up, postman moves for the touchdown grab, but ultimately it wouldn't be enough as Hunter Smith 
He gets a touchdown to put the Dragons up, but big, and they hold on to win it 35 to 14. Our guy, Jordan Mansberger, Hemi Turner himself, is with the winners. We're down on the field right now with Central as they just beat Tyrone 35 to 14. Joining me right now, Hunter Smith, you had some big plays on both sides of the ball tonight and everything. When did you know that you were on? Uh, you know, line, line was just amazing tonight. You know, there's some, there a bunch of blue collar boys right there. Yeah. 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 You know, they did great, and our defensive line stepped up. Secondary, you know, everyone did play the game. Right? Awesome, and you picked up some really gritty yards on the ground for this offense, especially in the second mm -hmm. half there. How much do you embrace that role? I love it. Love hitting people and just doing the job. Awesome. Yes, sir. Joining me right now, Jeff Hohenstein. Jeff, to start, you actually tied the state record tonight for most career touchdowns. So congratulations, and how much does that mean to you? Yeah, I'm just incredibly grateful. Um, you know, credit goes to my teammates. Uh, the offensive line did a great job with offense. And uh, just want to thank my receivers for making plays. Um, yeah, and just the coaches for, you know, for all they do to put me in a position. Awesome. And I'm not sure if you or anybody else on the team noticed this, but there was actually a bunch of Penn Cambria players up in the stands yeah. on the yes, time race. Yeah. Yeah. They were scouting you guys out. So I'm just curious, what's your message for them? I mean, uh, you know, just we're ready to go. We're going to work hard this week, and uh, we're going to be prepared for a good team. Awesome. Well, that'll do it for us here. Jordan and Anderley, back to you. Yeah! Yeah! Coming up next, we go to District 9 and District 6 Single A for their playoff action Dude after stuff. the break. Yeah! everyone, let's go to District 9 where Punxsutawney and St. Mary's facing off in the 3A semifinal. These two met in week five and it was the Dutch who came out on top 34 to 21. Winner of this one gets to take on Clearfield for the chip. So let's do this. Punxsutawney at St. Mary's for the District 9 Triple A Championship. 6-0 at the half. Opening up the second half, Charlie Pudre's pass is tipped and Noah Weaver picking it off and setting Punxsy up on the 11 yard line. A few plays later, Maddox Hedrick would find Weaver for the 9 yard score. This one, 7 to 6. The Flying Dutchman, though, would sail their way back into this one when Kudre finds his way into the end zone from just a yard out. 12 to 7, St. Mary's with under 2. And that would be the final score of this one. St. Mary's wins and they will play Fairfield. Cowdersport and Brockway for the District 9 single A playoffs. Rovers Jenny Cuello would tiptoe his way. Tiptoe through the end zone. 23 yards, 7 other than Brockway early in the first yeah. quarter. This one was all Brockway. Next series, Braden Fox launches one deep to Maddie Brubaker. 59 yards for the score. 14 0 Rovers. Now, Brockway's defense came up big as well. Check this out as Alex Carlson picks this one off, takes it to the his house, 40 yards, 21 nothing in the first, and Brockway would go on to win 66 to 7. In 2A, Brookville and Carden City, the Raiders win this one 31 to 7, and they're going to move on to play Red Bank Valley. Let's go back to District 6 now, where in single A, there will be a new champion this year with BG moving up to 2A. Motion and Valley traveling to Northern Cambria. The student section dressed up as ESPN in this one. Colts up 28-14 in the second quarter and adding to it, Xander Del Delonsky taking the handoff and in for the score, 35-14 Northern Cambria. Under a minute left in the first half, Mo Valley sticking around in this one. Tanner Kephart, Aaron one out for Jalen Curtin. Black Knights trail 21-35 at the half and the Colts win this one 55-28. Hornets playing Judietta Valley for the District 6A quarterfinal. The Hornets start with the ball, and after a long first quarter, Jacob Rodkey takes it down the sideline for a touchdown, putting the Hornets up 6 to nothing. But the Mustangs, they ride back with Mason at Cargo, take it, put it on the board, and lead 7 to 6. The Mustangs have the ball again. Andrew Maiko tries to get the ball, but Mason Cargo jumps up and grabs it to give the Hornets the ball. And the Hornets don't hold on to the ball for long, though. It's two plays later. They fumble it. Bodie Leo recovers it, giving the ball back to the Mustangs. Portage wins this one at 22-6. Homer Center and Cambria Heights for the District 6 single-A playoffs. Third quarter, Heights up 14-7. Riley Cleaver 
is picked off by Ty Stockley. It's Stockley brought down inside the 20. Now the first play of the fourth quarter on this one, it's Stockley punching this one in from close. Heights up 21 to 7. He also held on the point after, so he did everything in this Doing one. Doing everything. Later on, more defense from the Highlanders. The Highlanders. Tanner Trivis this time with the pick. Canberra Heights holds on to win 21 to 7. Also in single A, Glendale took on Penn's Manor, and the Comets move on with a final score of 21 to 7. And we'll have some more playoff action right after the break. Welcome back. Let's go to District 5 Single A, where Connemont Township is on the road to face Winber. A couple weeks ago, it was a one-sided affair where Winber shut out CT 61 to nothing. And a rough start for CT as the snap goes into the back of the end zone mm -hmm. for the safety. And the Ramblers, they're going to keep adding on to this one. Colin Marks takes it to the outside, jukes the defender, and in for the score. Winber up at this point, 9 to nothing. And it keeps on going for Winberg. On the next drive, John Schuster following his blockers, and he's going to be off to the races, folks. 81 yards for the score. He had a lot of big scores in this one as Winberg wins it 66 to nothing. And on the other side of the bracket, Northern Bedford comes out on top over Tussie Mountain, 35 to 13. They have a date with Winberg for the District 5 title next week. Let's go to the District 5, 2A for this one. Bedford at undefeated Berlin. Third play of the game, quarterback Pace Prosser throwing this one deep. Will Latuch climbing the ladder for the grab and falling into the end zone. Berlin up 7-0. Bedford's first drive of the game, Ethan Weber punches it in, but a mixed extra point makes it 7-6. Let's head into the second quarter. Prosser rolling to his right, finds Holby McLucas. McLucas. And, yep, that does say that. Sorry. My bad. Making this no, you're right. I was just nothing. emphasizing. Mountaineers move on as they win this one, 27-12. All right, staying in 2A, Chestnut Ridge ends up falling to Westinghouse. Final score, 48-15. Only a couple things left to do, Anderley. Coming up next, we crown our plays and player of the week. Player of the Week sponsored by Stars Trailer Sales. And this one goes to Sean Betwee filling in on the kickoff and he's told, make a play. And then does this no Huskies anywhere near the football and Betwee recovers it inside the 10. I think this is the longest onside kick ever. Has to be. Absolutely has to be. And time for our Player of the Week sponsored by Walker and Walker Equipment. Well, we talked about him. John Schuster from Wimber. He had 311 yards on 18 carries and three touchdowns on the game shout out to adam ripple for the stats and that's how you get player of the game big touchdowns at 81 yarder he had another long one there and uh, they rolled the 66 nothing win there that's that's gonna be a good matchup for them northern bedford next week for the district five title there in single a yeah we had some great games today some nice tight ones and some good blow i still there. can't believe that onside kick it was so long. And I said to Sean, when he lined up for the next one, I was like, hey, man, uh, maybe do it where I can see it next time. Because <laughs> you didn't get it. <laughs> kind of. So Folks, thank you for joining us for the playoff edition of Sports Week Week 1. We'll have more action next week at 1110. Don't miss it. Bye. Sports Week has been brought to you by Five Star Mitsubishi. Thanks for watching. Join us again next Friday at 1110.